Over the past, what, five years that I've been making videos for this channel, I've reviewed dozens of different webcams that have been marketed to streamers. From the cheap $50 C920 competitors, all the way up to those premium webcams that cost around $200 and everything in between. But today, the webcam that we are testing pushes that upper price tag even higher. This is the Facecam Pro, a $300 webcam from Elgato that promises to push the boundaries of what a typical webcam is capable of. At $300 though, I think Elgato might have a tough time convincing people to go the webcam route rather than going for an entry-level mirrorless camera, which will only cost you a little bit more. Well, there's only one way to find out and that is to put the Facecam Pro through its paces. So here you have the image from the Facecam Pro with absolutely no changes in software, just exactly what you get out of the box. Admittedly, you've just gone from seeing me through a $5,000 camera and lens to a $300 webcam, so it maybe makes a little bit more sense to start comparing it to some other webcams, and what better to compare it to than last year's release, the original Facecam. The original Facecam is a $170 webcam that's been well-reviewed as one of the better 1080p 60 webcams out there. So does the Facecam Pro have enough to justify the whopping $130 price difference over its little brother. Well, the standout feature is that Facecam Pro is capable of capturing in 4K60. That's a resolution of 3840 by 2160 and 60 frames per second. The original Facecam captures in 1080p60 and other 4K webcams like the Ava Media Livestreamer Cam 513 and the new Insta360 Link only capture up to 30 FPS in 4K. So 4K60 is a bit of a unique selling point for the Facecam Pro. Whether or not you actually need 4K in a webcam, especially when Twitch limits you to 1080p streams anyway, it's gonna be down to how you use it. It does, of course, allow you to digitally punch in on a 1080p stream without sacrificing any quality, but other than that, I really think that the 4K capabilities are more suited for your content creation needs. Things like shooting higher production YouTube videos or even vertical videos for platforms like TikTok, YouTube Shorts, or Instagram Reels, that extra resolution that you get will be useful. Unlike Twitch, you can actually stream in 4K60 to YouTube, but seeing as there's rumors going around right now that YouTube is gonna start limiting 4K playback to people that already subscribe to YouTube Premium, I don't know how useful that's gonna be. Sensor-wise, Facecam Pro uses a larger 1 over 1.8 inch Sony Starvis sensor compared to Facecam, which used a 1 over 2.5 inch sensor. A larger sensor should result in greater dynamic range and better noise performance, even in those low light conditions. Here are some side-by-side -side examples of what the webcams look like in ideal lighting, which is with a key and fill light on me, in pretty bad lighting with just my monitor lighting me, and with the worst possible lighting conditions with no lights on me other than my monitor and my shutters open letting in all of that sunlight from outside. I say sunlight, I live in England and it's November, so it's mostly rain, but you get the idea. As expected, really, the Facecam Pro definitely performs better in the well-lit scenario, getting much better skin tones. In the darkroom scenario, I was actually pretty surprised at how well the Facecam Pro did. I mean, yes, the shot itself doesn't look great, but my room at this point is very dark with just my monitors, and it still does a pretty decent job. When the shutters are open, you can really see these cameras at their worst. It's a super punishing scenario with overexposed light from outdoors and underexposed skin indoors. Neither camera looks great here. Of course, with Facecam Pro, you get to use Elgato's Camera Hub software, which is still my favorite webcam setting software out there. It really is embarrassing when you look at how bad some of the competitors' apps are in 2022. In Camera Hub, you can control things like the FOV, contrast, saturation, manual or auto focus, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance of the camera. Once you're happy with how your camera looks, you can then save these settings physically to the device itself. So it doesn't matter if you restart your computer or even if you move to a different computer entirely, those settings will still be there as the defaults for that camera. Some of the eagle-eyed of you out there might have noticed that there is a new setting in that software that you didn't see with the original face cam. Autofocus. Elgato actually made a pretty big statement with the original Facecam as to why they didn't include autofocus. They thought it was a better experience for creators, so they must have had a change of heart because the new Facecam Pro does have the option to both enable or disable the autofocus. Disabling it allows you to set the focus point manually, and when it's enabled, I would say that the autofocus performs okay. It's certainly still miles off what you get in a mirrorless camera or even your phone camera, 
and I still saw a bit of focus hunting from time to time, but if you need autofocus when you're holding things up to your stream or if you're moving around your room a lot, it's certainly usable. Field of view wise, Facecam has a 90 degree FOV, which is a good bit wider than the 82 degrees of the original Facecam. It's still not as wide as what you can get with some of Ava Media's webcams, for example, but field of view largely is completely subjective. Some people like that super wide look to show off things in their background and others prefer something a little more narrow. I think 90 degrees is a small Smart choice by Elgato, it sits somewhere in the middle and appeals to the most people. So Facecam Pro is definitely the best webcam that I've used so far. Granted, I haven't had any hands-on time yet with the Insta360 link, that should be arriving shortly. But how does it compare to an entry-level mirrorless camera? This is the Sony A5100 with its stock lens, a camera that is often recommended as the budget mirrorless camera for streaming. That's because it's one of the cheapest camera that uses interchangeable lenses, can be powered indefinitely, and has clean HDMI output. Granted, the stock lens is pretty poor on this, and most streamers that go on the Sony route end up upgrading to a better lens later on. But even with the stock lens, you can see how aesthetic of an image this produces. In my personal opinion, any webcam image I've seen just doesn't really compare. And remember that this is one of the cheapest mirrorless setups available. The overall image is just a much better representation of what my room actually looks like in terms of skin tones, brightness, color accuracy. They're just far superior to the webcams. Yes, it's only a 1080p image compared to the 4K from the Facecam Pro, but so much more goes into getting a nice image than just the resolution. There is a caveat here though, and that is that if you can even purchase an A5100 or an A6000 for around that $400 price point, you still need to purchase quite a lot of additional kit to actually make it work as a webcam. There's the capture card, the dummy battery to keep it working indefinitely, you need some way to mount it via a tripod or some kind of stand, and then there's the HDMI cable. So you can easily be spending an extra 100 to 200 dollars just to get this working. And if you really want to take advantage of a camera like this, many streamers end up spending an additional $350 on the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens, which as you can see makes a huge difference in both the FOV and that sweet background blur. But again, that lens alone costs more than the Facecam Pro. So where does this leave us? Do I recommend the Facecam Pro at $300? Like a lot of things, I think it comes down to the individual's use case and their financial situation. If you're just starting out or the thought of spending $300 on a webcam makes you squirm, then there are absolutely better value options from $50 and up, or you can even use something like your phone's camera. If you want arguably the best plug and play webcam that you can use for creating content as well as streaming, and that works across PC or Mac without the need for any other additional equipment, then the Facecam Pro is definitely an option to consider. If however, you're at that point where you have $300 to spend on a camera upgrade, but you think one day you might make that jump to an interchangeable lens camera system, then I would continue to say You'll end up getting a much more versatile camera that you can take outdoors and use for any kind of content that you wish to create, and you'll be able to upgrade things like lenses in time as you go. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought of the Facecam Pro, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.